VIX, also called the fear index, represents the 30-day expected volatility of the U.S. markets as reflected in the price of SPX options. It is also an index that can be traded, although not as easily as other indices such as the SPX or the NDX. In this lesson, we'll learn how to trade VIX by using VIX futures, VIX ETFs and ETNs, and also VIX options. We'll also learn the nuances of each one of these instruments, how a contango and backwardation affect their pricing, and how to select the best instrument to trade the VIX effectively and profitably. We're going to start our discussion about how to trade the VIX, but before we do that, we're going to go over a few of the basic concepts that are going to help us understand the VIX and eventually get to a point where we can start trading the VIX. First, volatility. What is volatility? Volatility is the degree of variation of a trading price series over time. It's usually measured by the standard deviation of logarithmic returns. So if you have a price chart, you can see volatility in action. If this price is changing a lot and the, sw the swings are pretty wide and pretty large, we can say that this instrument has a high level of volatility. If the changes are small and it displays stability over time, we could say that the level of volatility is low. So it doesn't matter what this instrument is. It could be a stock, it could be a futures contract, it could be a bond, it doesn't matter. As long as it has a price that is changing over time, we can analyze and look at its volatility. So if price is changing a lot, then it, there's a lot of volatility. If price is barely changing or the changes are very small over time, then there is a low level of volatility. Now, what is implied volatility? Implied volatility is the volatility that's calculated by applying a pricing model to option prices and obtaining the volatility value that results in the current option price. So if we have a certain underlying and we have all the options that make up the option chain for that specific underlying, we can have uh, many different options. We have puts, we have calls, different strike prices, different expirations. And every price, every option price, if we apply a, an, an option pricing model, we're going to be calculating a value of implied volatility that makes this be the premium for that particular strike price, expiration, call or put. So in a way, volatility is how much or how wide or how large the changes are when a price is changing over time. But implied volatility is the level of volatility that is implied by the option prices that, that this particular underlying has. Now, of course, we have several options here in the option chain. So each one of them, each option for every price that you have on an option, you can figure out a value of implied volatility. We can see it here. For example, for this particular strike price, for this price, for this option price, this is implying a level of implied volatility that's here 22.44%, 22.33%, etc. So implied volatility is obtained from option prices, whereas volatility itself is the degree of variation that a certain price has over time. Now that we know what implied volatility is, what is the VIX? The VIX is the implied volatility of the SPX index. It's also called the fear index. It is calculated based on the prices of SPX options and is published in real time by the CBO, by the Chicago Board Options Exchange. So VIX is the implied volatility of SPX based on the prices of SPX options. The SPX is the S&P 500 index. It is made up of the 500 largest companies in the U.S. They have a certain weighting that goes into the index for every company, for every stock price based on market cap. And you can calculate the value of the um, S&P 500 index. That index has options. And out of those options, we can figure out 
the implied volatility of those options and we can calculate a single value for the underlying SPX. Remember, we have several options that make up the, um, the, all the different options for SPX. We're going to have to calculate a single value for SPX, even though we have as many values as we have options for SPX. So we're going to see how we can arrive at a single value for the volatility for the implied volatility of SPX. And this is what we would call VIX. VIX is an index. It is derived from SPX options. We cannot buy it. We cannot sell it. It is just an index. Now that we have a better idea of what the VIX is, we know that it is the implied volatility of the S&P 500 index. And the S&P 500 index itself, we know it represents the U.S. market because it's made up of the 500 largest companies in the U.S. So in a way, the VIX is the implied volatility of the U.S. market. But if we look at this number, and it is a percentage number, what does that number represent? If we hear or if we see the VIX having a value of, for example, 20%, what does that mean? What is that 20% or what is that number, the VIX, what does it represent numerically? If you think about the SPX having a price of, for example, 3,335, like in this case, the VIX represents a price range starting from the current price and having the range be between SPX plus the percentage represented by VIX and SPX minus the percentage represented by VIX. Once we have this price range, VIX tells you this number represents a price range where the S&P 500 index is expected to be after one year with a 68% probability. So basically a one standard deviation probability. So over the next year, we expect the price of SPX to be between SPX plus this percentage and SPX minus this percentage with a probability of 68%. So basically one standard deviation. Here I'm just making a note that the distribution of stock prices is log normal, but for ease of explanation, a, we're going to use a normal distribution. So basically this higher range or this uh this the price to the upside should have a higher value than than it is right here and the price to the downside should be higher as well so the range should be smaller in the downside and larger in the upside because of log normality but just so that we have a good understanding of uh what the vix means and how it relates to the spx we're going to use the normal distribution and it really doesn't make a difference for normal values of SPX and VIX. So we're going to use just a normal distribution. So if we have, for example, the price of 3,335 right now, and you have a VIX of 20%, it means that the SPX price is going to fluctuate and is going to expire at the end of this year. So basically it's going to end up after one year at a price that's inside the range that is uh, determined by the 3,335 plus 20% of that. So approximately that would be maybe around 4,000 and the price represented by the current price minus 20% of that which would be around, let's say, 2,700, 26, 2,700. So this range has the prices that we have 68% probability of landing in between from today and one year from now. So that's what the VIX means. It, it determines a price range for SPX after one year. Now, of course, if you want to use 
periods that are that are less than one year, you could uh, use a formula to just apply the VIX over a shorter period, which is something we're going to see later on. But this is basically what the VIX means. This is what it represents. Now, how is it calculated? We already mentioned that it's calculated by the Chicago Board Options Exchange and it's uh, disseminated, it's published the whole during the whole day, the, the whole trading day. So it's constantly being calculated based on SPX options, as we mentioned. So we have the SPX, we have the SPX options, and we can calculate VIX based on this. Now, of course, we have several options. So which options do we choose? Well, there's a few guidelines for the SIBO to calculate it. They use two expirations between 23 and 37 days. Why do they use these expirations? Because the VIX is the implied volatility that is expected over the next 30 days. So this, the uh, instead of calculating the volatility over a very long period, or a shorter period, the VIX is the implied volatility of the SPX options, or, or if we want to think about the underlying, the implied volatility of SPX over the next 30 days, but expressed in an annual form. So it's going to be an annual number, but it's only considering information for the next 30 days. That's why it takes two expirations between 23 and 37 days and it's, it only uses Friday expirations whether they are monthly or weekly. Remember that we have one monthly SPX expiration and we have several or uh, one expiration every week and recently we have started also trading uh, Monday and Wednesday also SPX options. So there's several different expirations. The ones that the VIX uses are Friday expiration, whether they're weekly or monthly, between 23 and 37 days. So it could be the 24 and 31. It could be the 25 and 32. It could be the uh, 28 and 35, etc. It uses two expirations. And it only considers out of the money calls and puts, so no in the money or add the money, starting at the money or at the money forward until two consecutive zero bits are found and zero bits are ignored. So if you start at the money, you start looking at puts, for example, starting from the add the money and going out of the money until you find one zero bit if you find one and the next strike going, of course, um, lower in price, if the next one has a bid, then you just ignore the zero bid and continue, uh, continue on using those numbers, calculating the value of VIX until you find two consecutive strike prices or two consecutive options with strike prices that have zero bids. At that point, you stop calculating and those are the ones you're going to consider. Now, of course, the ones that are closer to the add the money are going to be given more weight when we actually get the number. And uh, this is going to be done for the calls as well for puts in the two expirations that are going to be between 23 and 37 days. The result is going to be a number that represents the expectation of the market for the volatility of the US market as represented by the S&P 500 index. And when we have the VIX, we know that that number represents the uh, variation that we can have from the current price up and down over the next year with a 68% probability. So it, within a one standard deviation. This is what the VIX is. Now we know what it represents. Now we know how it's calculated. And um, now we are going to learn 
that the VIX volatility is an asset class as well. So just the same way we have stocks and we can bet on stock prices going up or down, just as we can have options and we can bet on a certain call or put going up or down depending on whether we buy it or sell it, that same way we can have those types of um, trades, we can also trade VIX itself. So we can make a play on volatility. If I think that volatility is going to go higher or lower, regardless of where the actual underlying prices are, so basically the SPX, regardless of what happens to SPX, I want to bet on the, the value of VIX. I want to bet on the VIX rather than betting on the uh, SPX index value. So it's going to be it, th those trades, uh, that type of trading is something that's only available uh, with options. Of course, you can do it with stocks uh, because stocks don't have volatility that you can trade. Uh, in this case, options have volatility. And in this case, not only are you going to be betting on the implied volatility of a certain underlying, you're going to be betting on the implied volatility of the U.S. market, which is VIX, which is a number that's uh, widely followed, that it's uh, available all the time, that it's uh, uh, reported all the time alongside the SPX and the NASDAQ and the uh, Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones. Um, so it's a number, it's a, it's a way to trade volatility and something that can be useful and that can, um, that can be a good addition to your portfolio. So now we're going to see how to trade the VIX. How can I trade that number? Because remember, this is a number that's calculated by the Chicago Board Options Exchange, but we haven't said anything about buying it or selling it. And if we see, an, if we see the number, for example, the uh, current VIX number right now in the market is 26% or, or thereabout. Uh, if I think it's going to go up, then what can I do? What instrument can I do? Can I buy the VIX? Can I, can I uh, buy options on the VIX? What can I do to express that expectation of volatility? Now, as we know, usually volatility moves in an inverse direction or in the opposite direction of where the uh, actual underlying is moving. So if SPX is going higher, usually the VIX is going lower and vice versa. But it's not always the case and it's not a rule. It's just the way markets work. So um, now we're going to see how we can trade the VIX regardless of what the SPX is actually doing. How can we trade the VIX? Now we know what it is, we know what it represents, and we know that it's a number, that it's a percentage. We just want to make money with it. So we, we want to know how to trade it. So can I go out and buy the VIX? Can I sell the VIX short? Well, no, you can't. The VIX itself is just an index. You can't buy it or sell it. You have to use some other financial instrument to do this. In this lesson, we're going to look at three different alternatives. We're going to be looking at VIX futures. We're going to look at VIX ETPs, so ETFs and ETNs, exchange traded products, so basically exchange traded funds and exchange traded notes. And also we're going to be looking at VIX options. So we're going to look at futures, ETPs and options. And by using these instruments, we're going to be able to trade the VIX, even though we're not able to actually buy or sell the VIX directly. We're going to start with VIX futures. We know that the VIX itself is not tradable, that we can't go out and buy the VIX or sell the VIX short, but we can use futures to actually trade the VIX without actually using the index itself. Everything you know about the futures market and futures contracts apply to VIX futures. They have different expirations, they're monthly and weekly, they're cash settled, and the contract size is $1,000 
times the index. So let's analyze what this means. Different expirations, you're going to have, for the most part, uh, a monthly, monthly expirations over the next, let's say, nine months. And you have also weekly expirations over the next, let's say, four to six weeks. Those are the ones that are available to trade VIX with VIX futures. Cash settled, what this means is if you go long the uh, futures contract at a certain price and it expires, you have a certain value of the VIX at that point. If you were long and you're above, you're going to have uh, cash sent to your account. If you were long and the VIX is below, that means that you lost, then you're going to be having cash taken from your account. There is no deliverable, it's cash settled, which is one of the things that make this, um, this particular instrument, so futures, futures contracts, very attractive because you're never going to have uh, delivery of anything. It's just going to be cash settled. If you go long and VIX goes higher and it expires at a higher price than you bought it, then you're going to make money. And if it goes lower and you were short, you're going to make money. Now, the contract size is uh, it's, it's a little bit large because you have uh, the size is 1,000 times the index. So if the VIX is trading at 26, then the value of the actual contract is 26,000. And if it expire, if you're long and, it, and then it settles at, you, you buy it at 26 and it settles at 23, well, you're going to be losing $3,000. So... It's important to, uh, to, uh, to not lose sight of the fact that this is a, a somewhat of a large contract. Here we have an example. This is current information. We have, here we have um, graphically the different expirations for VIX. We have the dash line here is VIX spot or the cash VIX which is the, the actual VIX number currently in the market. And these are the different um, expirations, the, 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 the value of the different future contracts, VIX futures contracts, uh, at different expirations. So we have October, November, December, January, February, March, etc. We can see that the values are not the same, which is something that's going to be very important once we start talking about even exchange traded products and uh, exchange traded funds and products of that nature. We need to understand that different expirations have different values for VIX, even though the VIX value or spot VIX is only one at any time. You have all the different futures contracts that are trading at different values. So, for example, right now, the uh, VIX is trading at 26.27, but the October is trading at 29.90. The November is trading at 32.15, of course, because we have, what do we have in November? We have the U.S. elections. So there is uh, an expectation of heightened uh, levels of volatility here at this point. And from that point on, it is expected to be um, probably... Uh, going down with time and that's why we have this structure this is called the term structure of volatility this is these are the uh, futures contracts or the term structure of vix vix futures term structure so as you can see here we start with the front month which is usually called the active month and which has quite a bit of liquidity so it's a uh, it's a contract that you can buy and sell with no problem you, you're always going to have the opportunity to buy or sell those contracts with without any any liquidity problems so we have the active month which currently is october this is trading at 29.90 then november 32.15 30.45 for december uh, 29.60 for january so even though VIX is trading at 2627, the term structure is telling us that it's going to go higher and then it's going to start going down. Okay, so 
this particular arrangement of values of um, of these futures values over time, the ones where the front month is high, and then uh, subsequent months, later months, are going lower and lower and lower. It's a uh, a very particular configuration and a very particular structure that is called backwardation. This means that the front month, in this case, it's not perfect backwardation because the the active month from the active month to the next month, it's actually in a little bit of the opposite, which is called contango, which means that later months are higher. In this case, if we ignore the first one, if we start here, this is called backwardation, which means the, 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 the first month is at a higher level than the next month, which is at, the, at a higher level than the next one, which is at a higher level than the next one. This is called backwardation. It's a very particular structure and it's going to affect the uh, pricing of several of, of the uh, products that are related to the VIX. Also, we have here something that's very important and something that's perhaps obvious, but we're still going to mention. At expiration, the future contracts settle to the VIX spot price or cash price. So if you buy VIX at $29.90 right now, and then you take it, let's say um, we have around... Um, let's say 20 days to expiration from today. If we start getting closer to expiration and let's say the uh, VIX spot at expiration is 2627 and you bought it at 2990. Well, at expiration, whether spot is going to go higher or the future is going to go lower or a combination of both, they're going to converge and they're going to have the same value at expiration for this contract. Only at expiration for every contract is going to expire and it's going to go to spot. So if it if it expires at 2627, you bought it at 2990, then of course uh, you're going to be losing money. If you short it right here and there is no change, then of course you're going to be making money that from 29.90 to 26.27 so just around what uh, three dollars and uh, three dollars and uh, 63 cents or you're gonna lose three dollars and 63 cents if you are long okay so that's the way this works the future contract the futures contract starts getting closer and closer to expiration and as this happens, is going to start converging, whether spot is going to go higher or the futures contract value is going to start going lower. And at, at expiration, they're going to converge and you, they're going to be settled at spot. So it's important to uh, know that these products can be, of course, bought and sold prior to expiration. But if you let them expire, and if you take the trade down to expiration, you're going to be cash settled and you're going to either have money going into your account or you're going to have money be taking, being taken from your account. Now we're going to talk about VIX ETPs. We're going to talk about exchange traded products. So ETFs and ETNs that are related to VIX. We know that the, the VIX index itself is not tradable, but we can go and find ETFs and ETNs in the stock market and trade them the same way you trade stocks or other ETFs. For example, you know of Apple, you know of uh, Microsoft, you know of uh, Spiders, SPY or QQQ. The same way you trade those products, you can find VIX ETPs, ETFs or ETNs, and you can go to the market. If you know the ticker symbol, just go there. You buy them. You sell them. They even have options on them. Options on those ETFs or on those ETNs. Not VIX options. But every particular, every individual 
ETF or ETN uh, has or could have uh, options on them. So VIX ETFs and ETNs cannot track spot VIX because VIX cannot be traded. So how can they uh, replicate it perfectly? They can't. So they use futures contracts. So we already talked about futures contracts. We know more or less how they work. We know that there is a term structure to uh, the futures, to VIX futures. So to replicate the VIX the performance, the daily performance of VIX, usually what these funds do is they hold two different months or two different expirations, two different futures contracts to replicate VIX's performance. Okay, so they have a combination in different ratios and those ratios are changing every day. Usually they have a daily role where they come out of a certain futures contract and go into another futures contract so that the uh, proportion is actually weighted to replicate the VIX itself, which is 30 days. Remember that the VIX measures the expected volatility or the implied volatility of SPX over the next 30 days, even though it's expressed in an annual form. Since the futures contracts expire, these ETPs need to maintain their exposure by rolling futures contracts daily. And this could introduce contango drag on top of the normal volatility drag present in leveraged products. So as we know, when we have something that is designed to replicate twice the daily uh, performance or three times the daily performance of a certain product, if there's a lot of volatility, over time, your performance, your um, results or your um, actual um, percentages are going to deteriorate because, say for example, you have something that's starting at 100 and you have a two times um two times the, uh, the daily performance. In the first day, it, it goes higher by 50%. So it goes from 100 to 150. But you have to have the twice the daily performance. So you go from 100, instead of 50%, you go to 100%. So you go to 200. The next day, your, um, your original investment loses one third. So it goes down by 33%. So it goes back down to 100. But the one that started at 100 and went to 200 now has to fall by 66% because it's twice the daily performance. So if you have the uh, 200 and it drops by 66%, you can see that because of the volatility, because the, the, the moves were so large, having a leveraged product has some deterioration in terms of results. On top of that, if, you, if, you, if we think about contango, which is the opposite of backwardation, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, you're going to have also a drag effect on those ETFs and ETNs. These ETPs can also have options on them. These options are related exclusively to these products and not to the VIX. So if you have a certain ETF, a certain ETN, they can have options. Those options are not related to VIX at all. They're related only to the product itself. For example, we have three of the uh, most important ones, they have huge liquidity. They're traded all the time. So th these are products that you can trade no problem. The liquidity is great. And uh, we've all traded them many, many times. Uh, if you talk about option traders, most option traders have used these uh, exchange traded products many, many times. VXX, it's an ETN. UVXY and SVXY are ETFs. So we have VXX, which is designed to, to uh, provide you with the, uh, the daily performance of the VIX. So one time the daily performance of the VIX. So if the VIX 
goes higher by 2% every day, you're expected to have that, 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 uh, those results on VXX. UVXY is designed to replicate 1.5 times the daily leverage. So 1.5 times the performance of VIX. So if it goes three percent, if it goes higher by three percent, you are supposed to get a uh, performance of four point five percent. And if it goes down by ten percent, then you're going to have your fund or your price UVXY's price go down by fifteen percent. SVXY is the opposite. So it's a it's an it's an inverse ETF, which is designed to give you 0.5 so half the return of the vix daily so negative half the return of the vix daily so if if the vix goes down by 10 percent, you're supposed to make five percent on svxy now as you can see we have some leverage here and in the past these products used to be more aggressive UVXY used to be two times the daily leverage and SVXY used to be minus two times the daily leverage, but volatility can explode quite substantially, can go very, very high. So we used to have a, a, a negative, uh, an inverse ETF called XIV, which actually blew up. So basically uh, sees uh, trading because it was designed in such a way that when the VIX started going higher by, let's say, um, 50%, the return had to be 100%, so you have no fun left, right? So the design was faulty, was flawed, and uh, that seems to have been corrected. So now you have, you have XIV doesn't exist anymore, so... We have VXX, we have UVXY, we have SVXY, we have many, many more. We have some ETFs that track not the 30-day the VIX, but rather the 9-day VIX or the 1-year VIX. So uh, those don't have a lot of liquidity. There's another one called VIXY, so V-I-X-Y, VIXY, and that's another one. That, that one has uh, okay liquidity, but these are the three the three main ones, VXX, UVXY, and SVXY. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the, their performance, their returns, compared to actual VIX over time so that we can see whether they track the index or not. Before we do that, we're going to take a look at Contango. Okay, so we talked about backwardation in the past where the uh, this is the uh, term structure. This is the term structure of VIX on this day. So what we can see here is if we have the front month and then the back month being higher than the front and then the later month being higher than this one and then the later one being higher than this one, we're going to have a situation called contango, which is the opposite of backwardation. Now. ETPs typically, we already mentioned this, typically hold these two contracts, these ones. So the ones be with less than 30 days and then a, f a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit over 30 days so that you can weigh them in such a way that you can get 30 days in varying ratios to replicate the daily return of the VIX index. Okay, so we have the two front months. Okay. Now, if we have a situation called this situation called contango, so where the uh, later months are trading at a higher price, what you what you're gonna need to do is, as you start balancing or rebalancing your ETF or your ETP, your ETN, you're going to have to if you're long this contract and long this contract, but now you need um, because this one time keeps passing, so now you need. Um, less of these ones and more of the back month you're going to have to sell the front month and buy the back month and you are not intending to change anything but just by doing the roll you're going to be losing money so contango is 
a bad situation for those ETFs or ETNs because since you're holding the front, let's say for ease of understanding, let's say you have the the front the two front expirations here. Let's say 15 days, and this is this could be I don't know 40 days. Once one day passes, you're gonna have to take some of these contracts, sell them. At this price and then buy these ones at this price you're not doing anything you're not buying more you're just rebalancing and by doing that you're going to be losing money you're, you're going to be losing the uh, the amount that is represented by the contango if it's very steep you're going to lose a lot if it's flat then you're probably not going to be losing a lot if it's backwardation is going to be positive for you because you're going to be selling at a higher price than the than the one you're buying as you do your daily rebalancing of your contracts so it's important to understand how those etfs work and this is the case for vxx this is the case for uvxy now svxy is the opposite because they need to sell those contracts so everything i said applies in the opposite way for SVXY because they instead of buying those contracts um, SVXY actually sells those contracts okay so this is the effect of contango so we talked about the volatility drag which means if you're leveraged you're going to be losing money if, if those moves are really really big and now we have contango drag which means the front month and the back month not being at the same level and the back month being more expensive the one that you have to buy okay so contango is a bad thing for um for those etfs and etns and now if we talk about the market usually what you'll find is that in times of of um crashes and and market collapses and and in times of volatility, when there's a lot of volatility in the market, usually what you'll see is either a flat structure or you're going to have backwardation. You're going to have a lot of volatility in the front and less volatility over time. That's going to be, this is what usually happens when there's a lot of volatility. When the market is calm and everything is okay and everything is moving very slow, usually the market is in contango. So if nothing is happening, these ETFs and ETNs, the uh, volatility, the VIX ETFs and ETNs, VXX, UVXY, they're going to start going down just because the market is not doing much and the futures for the VIX are in contango. So it's important that you are aware of this because that impacts the, um, the price of the different ETFs and ETNs. Now we have an example here. This is VXX. Okay. One time the, the returns of the VIX. The white line, this is VXX versus the VIX, and the VIX is in white. So this line is the VIX, and the, the candlesticks are the VXX. As you can see, for example, this is what we're mentioning. If the market is calm, and nothing's happening look how much this is falling when the VIX is actually going down yes a little bit but not that not as much as this okay and this is because of contango as you start doing the rolls you're going to have your ETF or ETN go lower even though the VIX is barely going down okay now the VIX usually another thing we didn't talk about the uh, VIX usually moves in a range, as you can see here, this is one year. The uh, lower, the lowest I've seen it in my lifetime is around 11, which was, I believe, back in 2007, something like that, prior to the, uh, to the, to the problems with, um, to the financial crisis. The highest level of VIX, which was around here, is over the last year. This is only one year. The highest that we had was around 84, something like that. So 
This is a typical range for VIX. So something, the average, I think the long-term average is between 18 and 20. Okay, so anything below that is below average and, and then anything above that is above average. So as you can see that VXX actually tracks the VIX, not exactly perfectly, but it tracks it pretty well. At least it moves in the same direction. Sometimes, uh, for example, here the VIX is actually higher than, than the price of the VXX, and then it goes lower. And and then here the uh, the candles for the VXX are higher than the VIX, etc. So as I mentioned, this is because of the uh, because the price of those ETFs and ETNs depend not only on the on the level of VIX, but also they also depend on uh, the uh, the term structure that uh, those future contracts have at that at that point in time. So it's not only VIX level, but also the term structure of VIX. So this was VXX. It tracks it pretty pretty well. This is UVXY versus VIX and VIX is in white. So something similar. This is supposed to be um, more leverage because it's 1.5 times. And you can see, for example, here, look at the level. This is this is the uh, this uh, this axis is for the uh, UVXY. This is for VIX. Okay, UVXY actually went from, for example, here. I believe this this was in March. With the uh, COVID problems, with the COVID market crisis, you can see that it went from a level of something like nine or ten dollars. It went up all the way to 136 so it was quite a quite a quite a move and then it collapsed as well if we went from 136 down to um 50 dollars in something like five days so this these instruments are uh, are highly leveraged so you have to you you have to uh you have to exercise caution when when you when you're trading these instruments. The next one is going to be the inverse SVXY versus VIX. VIX is in white. As you can see, this is going down. This is what we mentioned. Usual contango when the market is calm and quiet, um, it pushes it up. Okay, so you can see VIX is doing not much, and SVXY is going higher, then VIX starts going higher, and then SVXY starts collapsing. Okay, this one in particular didn't collapse, didn't didn't blow up like XIV, but it's a risk with these products. You have to be aware of this that their their value doesn't only depend on the uh, VIX level, but it also depends on the term structure of the of those futures contracts. The third way to trade the VIX is going to be by using VIX options. So we know that the VIX is an index that you can't trade it, but you can have options on VIX. So you have VIX here and you have the options. So you have a VIX value and you have the different strike prices and you have options. These options are European style, so they can only be exercised at expiration or assigned at expiration not prior to expiration you can buy them or sell them at any time but you can you can exercise them um, anytime prior to expiration they are european style they're cash settled so there is no underlying there is nothing to deliver there is nothing to to receive or to deliver when when you're exercised or assigned they're cash settled they're typically and the ones that are currently in the market are all AM settlement, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. And these are a little bit different. Usually when we talk about expirations, we talk about expirations on a Friday. These instruments, for example, futures, something we didn't mention, was that they expire on a Wednesday usually. Okay, so these options expire on a Wednesday as well because what you want to do is you want to have 30 days before an SPX expiration. So that's why 
the uh, Friday would be 28 days. So you ha you add uh, an additional two days to make it 30 days. So they expire on a Wednesday, but because these are AM settlement, so morning settlement, then what happens is the last day that you can trade VIX options is typically on a Tuesday. Now, of course, if you have a holiday or something like that, that's going to change. But typically, you know, most of the time, um, you, you're going to have VIX futures expiring on a Wednesday. You're going to have VIX options also expiring on a Wednesday, but in the morning. So you can only trade them until the Tuesday prior to the Wednesday. Okay. So if you look here, we have VIX and the spot VIX here. We're not talking about futures at all. We're only talking about spot and options on VIX. Okay. So one of the things that we can start if we start thinking about these options is, okay, we have VIX at $25 here. $25.41 is the value that I'm getting here. So let, let me take a look at the uh, the money, either the 25 or the 26. Let's say the 25. So, okay, you go to the add the money and there's something that's off. If you, th if you see here, the call is trading at $5, but the put is trading at 20 cents. So usually add the money, they're not going to be exactly the same, the call and the put, but usually they're going to be quite in, in, in the same range. They're going to be pretty close. This one is not close at all. The 25 is trading at $5 for the call and 20 cents for the put. And the 26, which could be because it's 2541, is trading at 420 for the call and 45 cents for the put. It's completely different. So what's wrong here? So when we're looking at a at, at uh, VIX options, we're looking at a certain expiration, of course. In this case, we're looking at the uh, 20 days to expiration exp uh, month here, which is the October 21st in the morning, a.m. So we can see that this is actually not the at the money, really, because the values of the call and the put are completely different. So this is not what the market's telling me. This is not the real at the money. So let's take a look at the futures. And if you look at the futures, you can go and take a look at the future that expires in 21 days, which is the closest one to the uh, to the uh, to these options. Okay. So this is the October, which is actually the active month. Okay, when you have a futures contract, there is one particular expiration that's designated as the active month, which is which has most of the liquidity when you trade futures. In this case, if you look at the future and you identify that this is the corresponding future, it's trading at around 29.80 by 29.85, so around $30. So if you go to the 30 back to the VIX options, I'm back in the options, this is the futures, this is options, the 30 actually does look like the add the money. So the 30 is trading at just around 240 and 260. So it's a little bit under 30, so a little bit below 30. So let's say 2980, it would be more balanced, it would be the add the money with the roughly the same value for calls and puts, which is exactly what the futures are telling you. So in conclusion, the first thing that we notice when we talk about VIX options is that the VIX options are not priced based on spot. So I have here, the VIX options are priced based on their corresponding futures contract and not based on spot VIX. So as you can see here, the current value of VIX makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. What's important is what is your corresponding future trading at? And that's going to be where your kind of or real at the money is, even though spot is trading at 25, your future is trading at 29.80, and this is your at the money for this expiration of options.
okay? Now, VIX options, we're talking about VIX options, have implied volatilities just like any other option product, okay? So just the same way that SPX has, uh, has all the different options and every option has an implied volatility, VIX options have implied volatilities as well. And in fact, you could calculate the VIX of VIX in a similar way to how we calculated the, the VIX of SPX. We used SPX options and we got the VIX, the expected volatility over the next 30 days. In this case, we can do the same thing for VIX. You can have the VIX of VIX. You can use VIX options and based on VIX options, you can calculate the volatility of volatility, the expected variation of VIX over the next 30 days, which would be VIX of VIX. And the volatility of VIX, the implied volatility of VIX is what's going to determine whether these options are going to be priced expensively or cheaply, okay? Because remember, the options, option prices depend on, on the level of implied volatility. It just so happened to, it just happens to be a volatility product, but those same principles apply. So if you have a high implied volatility, those options are going to be expensive. If you have a low implied volatility, keep in mind, low implied volatility of VIX, then those options are going to be cheap. And that's important for you if you're going to start trading these products, okay? Like VIX options. Okay, this is the first thing that's very important to understand about VIX options. The add the money is not the real add the money. You have to go to the futures, to the corresponding futures contract, and you're going to get the uh, add the money level from there. So to summarize, VIX options, we have them here. Now remember, just so you don't get confused, VXX, UVXY, and SVXY, we already talked about those. Those were ETFs and ETNs. VXX was an ETF, I'm sorry, an ETN, and UVXY and SVXY were um, ETFs. Those products, they have options, but those are not cash settled. Those are stock settled. Just the same way Apple, QQQ, or any other equity, any other stock or ETF trades is the same with those. So you can buy options on VXX, but they're not cash settled. So you might be assigned if you sell them. You might have to exercise if you buy them the same way you have options on equities. So you have to be aware of this. Here, we're not talking about that. We're talking about VIX options, index options, okay? The multiplier is 100. So same way, if you wanna, uh, for example, if you wanna buy the 28 call, you have it's trading for $3 to 320. So you would have to be spending here uh, around $310 or so, 320 if we wanna just um, go with the ask. Okay, three hundred and twenty dollars. They are VIX options are European style and cash settled. We mentioned that already. You cannot exercise them prior to expiration. And when they expire, you don't receive you don't receive anything. It's not they're not stock sell, they're cash sell. You're gonna receive cash or you're going to pay cash if you lost in your position, okay? They have morning settlement to a special quote, which is going to be a ticker VRO. If you're familiar with SPX and the morning settlement, you're gonna know that SPX settles when it opens, you cannot trade it anymore on expiration day, it, it settles to a special ticker called SET, S-E-T. This is the same, only instead of S-E-T, this is V-R-O. So on the Wednesday, let's say you have a, an option that expires, you get to the Tuesday before the Wednesday, and um, you don't close it, you don't do anything, it expires. So now it's gonna be cash settled based on the opening value of, v, of VIX, which is going to be 
VRO. This is going to be the settlement price. And based on that, you're going to either receive cash or you're going to have to pay cash. They usually expire on Wednesdays. So 30 days prior to an SPX expiration Friday. But VIX options only trade until the Tuesday because on the Wednesday, you can't trade it anymore. It only opens, you check VRO, and that's how you'll know uh, whether you're going to be settled for a profit or for a loss. The last trading day is the day prior to expiration, usually a Tuesday. Now, something that's very important. Short calls on the VIX are extremely dangerous. Why? Because the VIX can, can go high, very, very high. Okay, it can explode higher. Okay, so short calls are not recommended on the VIX, naked calls. You can use short call spreads if you want. That would be something that you can do, but no short naked calls. Long calendarized positions on the VIX don't behave the same way as other products. So that's something that we're going to look at a little bit later, but basically, when you, when you sell the front expiration and you buy the back expiration, remember that the VIX could explode higher, okay? The VIX itself could go very, very high. Now, if it goes higher, what's going to happen to volatility of volatility is going to explode higher as well. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an exponential effect. So it's a compounded effect. Not only is VIX itself going higher, but the VIX of VIX, the volatility of VIX is going to be going higher as well. So your front expiration options are going to go really high in value, the ones that you're short, and maybe the back expiration is not going to go as high as the front. So you're going to go from uh, maybe a, a certain contango where the, um, where the front is at a very low level and the, and the back months are at a high level. You can go from contango to extreme backwardation and that point you can lose a lot of money so being um being short options in the front month is very risky that's why uh it's not it is not recommended it's the only product that uh, where where it's not it it is suggested that you avoid calendars or diagonals anything that's calendarized here we have an example. So we have two actual term structures from real dates. This is February 19th, this year, 2020. This is February 28th, so nine days difference. This is what we had on February 19th. This is the VIX, okay, VIX futures. We had the 30-day expiration at 15, and then 16, 16, 16. This is typical contango, low in the front, and the back starts going higher. Then the market started collapsing, and what do we have? The front goes to 26, and the next one goes to 23, and the next one goes to 21. So the front month went from 15 to 26, 11 points. The back month the next one went from 16 to 23, seven points only. And then what if we, if you had a calendar where you're selling this and then you're buying this, you go from 15 to 26, you lose 11 plus the volatility is going to go higher, volatility of volatility. And then this one 17 is going to go to 20. So on the front, you lose from 15 to 26, and the back, 17 to 20, three only. This is what you make. This is the profit. So this is why it is not recommended that you have calendarized positions on the VIX, especially um, long calendarized positions, so where you're short the front and long the back. Okay? You can see how the shape changed in only nine days. You went from contango to backwardation, so the front went very high, and the back months, some of these 
this one went from 1737 to 1962 so this is 190 200 days look it went it went it did it did go higher but it went higher by two points this is 11 points so it's quite a difference that's why once you start getting involved with term structure you have to be careful with um, how you structure your trades so to summarize VIX has no limit to the upside, okay? It can go to 26, it could go to 80, it could go, we saw that uh, at, at some point the VIX was trading at 80 just this year. So it could go really high. So you have to be careful when you're short calls. Front expirations, especially front expirations, can go very high. So short calls are dangerous. Always do a short call spread if you want to do a uh, short call position so instead of naked short calls do a short call spread at least your losses are are um, are defined they're not you, you don't have uh, unlimited risk okay now remember that with VIX options you can do any option strategy you want okay something we didn't mention we just we just looked at the options but you can do spreads. You can do a. You can buy a call spread. You can buy a put spread. You can sell a call spread. You can sell a put spread. You can, you can do a ratio spread. You can do a back ratio. You can sell a straddle. You can buy a straddle. You can sell a strangle, sell an iron condor. It doesn't matter what strategy you use. Those are options. They're linked to the VIX. They're options. They're VIX options. They're index options but you can do any strategy you want a long calendarized position calendars or diagonals where the front expirations are sold and the back expirations are bought have special risks with VIX options that other products don't have okay why because if you look at Apple for example well Apple is the same Apple you have the underlying is Apple so it doesn't have a futures term structure Apple right now, the price of Apple, if it's um, $100, then it's the same price. It's going to be, with the exception of um, the effect of, uh, of interest rates, that would be the same future price of Apple, right? This one has very different prices. It's essentially different underlyings. This month, this is going to move somewhat independently of this one, of this one, of this one. This is what makes them dangerous. This is because the term structure of VIX can have extreme levels of backwardation in, 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 in the case of market crashes and can create huge losses in these positions along with the fact that the only underlying that can be used to hedge VIX options is futures, futures contracts, which move somewhat independently from each other in different expirations. As we saw here, this is only nine days apart. VIX itself is volatile, so a volatility index for VIX was created, VVIX, which is calculated by the CBO, the Chicago Board Options Exchange, in a similar way to how VIX is calculated from SPX options, VVIX is calculated based on VIX options, which is the volatility of VIX, and when things start going haywire when 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 the market starts collapsing not only is vix itself going to go higher but the volatility of vix is also going to go higher so it's a double whammy if you're short for example calls on vix so those you have to be careful what you do so as long as you do stuff that's defined strategies that are defined that have max prof max profits and max losses, especially max losses that are defined, you can do whatever you want in terms of strategies. Just be very careful when you're dealing with naked um, risks. So naked, especially naked calls, naked puts. You can sell you can sell puts. That's no problem because volatility can only go down to let's say 11 10 something like that you it, it cannot go to zero or even if it does go to zero it's only to zero it's not going to go to 90 or 150 or 200 like you could go on the upside so that's why you have to be careful with these positions
So now we're going to summarize all the ways you can trade the VIX. Okay. We have the VIX futures, we have the VIX ETPs, and we have VIX options. The symbols for VIX futures slash VX is going to be the active month, the active expiration. For exchange traded products is going to be every individual ETF or ETN, VXX, UVXY, SVXY, VIXY, you name them. There's plenty. Just make sure if you are thinking of trading these, just make sure that they have enough liquidity. These are the three that are very liquid. The rest, Vixie is also liquid, but anything else, you can see volumes of um, 100,000 shares or 200,000. So that's not enough liquidity. And especially if you want to think about doing options on them, then you have to be careful when with the uh, the ETF or ETN that you select to trade VIX. Okay. VXX is the one I would recommend, but also UVXY and SVXY are, are good, good alternatives as well. And VIX options, the symbol is under the VIX. You go to the VIX and you see, you look at, at, uh, at uh, the options that are listed under VIX. Those are the ones that you're going to find here. One thing I'd like to mention is that futures can have options. So, for example, the E-mini S&P, which is uh, the futures contract for the, uh, the S&P, uh, you, you have options for the E-mini S&P and you can trade those options. The VX futures don't have options. You have VIX options, which are index options, okay? But you don't have futures options, okay? You, the ETFs and ETNs, those ones usually they have options, but these ones are, are going to be priced based on that product, not based on VIX. Only VIX options are, are priced based on VIX. And the futures don't have options, and they're priced based on VIX, but it's a different value for every expiration. The size for the futures is going to be the index times 1000 for every ETP is the value of the ETP. If VXX is trading at $26, then you want to buy hundred shares of, e of VXX. You, you just pay $2,600. Or if you have, um, if you have margin, well, these products sometimes, for example, UVXY is very volatile. So sometimes it's a hundred percent margin. So you don't, you don't get any any relief. You have to come up with um, all the money that that position represents. So, if you if it's trading at twenty six dollars, as I was saying, and you want to buy a hundred shares, you uh, put up uh, two thousand six hundred dollars. VIX options, the multiplier is a hundred. Just the same way we think about options in general. The multiplier is a hundred. So if your call is trading for three dollars, you want to buy one single contract then it's going to be uh, $300 that you're going to be needing. The settlement for VIX futures and VIX options, they're cash settled, both. For ETPs, the uh, settlement is stock settled. So if you have VXX and it expires and it expires in the money, you can exercise it. If you have a short VXX and it expires, you can be assigned. So something else to consider, um, in my opinion, these products are a little bit cleaner because you don't deal with any exercise or assignment, just cash settled. It expires, you get the money or you pay the money and that's it. It's a little bit cleaner. Liquidity. For futures, liquidity is great in the active month. Other months, it depends. If you go 200 days out, they're probably not, the, the liquidity is not going to be great. But if you stick to the active month, then it's going to be great. And remember, you can roll futures as well. So when the active month rolls off, you can roll the position to the next month. But if it's in contango, you're going to have to pay some money. And if it's in backwardation, then you're going to get some money. So you have to consider that as well. For the ETFs and ETNs, they're product dependent. 
VXX, UVXY, SVXY, they have great liquidity. If you look at the VIX, that's nine days, and VIX, that's one year, and and some other products that are that are ETFs or ETNs related to VIX. Um, some of them have awful liquidity, so you have to make sure that you, you that you use and you only trade um, the uh, products that have great liquidity. VXX, UVXY, SVXY, they're fine. You can use them, no problem. VIX options. The uh, liquidity is great. Again, if you're deep out of the money or deep in the money or your expiration is really too far out, then uh, probably it's not going to be that great. But if you stick to um, the the near-term expirations and um, strike prices that are near the at the money, then you're going to be fine. The liquidity, you can trade them. You can trade those options, no problem. Now, additional comments. When rolling the futures, contango is a drag for long positions because you need to sell the front and buy the back. If it's in contango, you're going to have to pay for it. Backwardation is a drag for short positions. If you if you have a short position, then you have to you have to buy the front and sell the back, which means that if it's contango, it's good for you, but if it's backwardation, it's bad for you. Okay. These products, the ETFs and ETNs, since they're rolled daily, contango is a drag for long positions and backwardation is a drag for short positions. Okay, same deal. You need to be aware of the term structure of VIX futures because that impacts both futures and also ETFs and indirectly also VIX options. VIX options are priced based on the corresponding futures contract, not spot VIX. We saw this. The uh, spot VIX was trading at 25 and the uh, futures contract was trading at 30. So that was my add the money for those options. The, tw the 30, the one, the one that uh, was based on the uh, futures contract value, not the spot. Short calls on VIX can be very dangerous, especially in the front months, because they can spike up when there is a market crash or, or some situation that um, where the volatility is going to be really high. The, uh, the front expirations are the ones that react the most. Calendars on VIX have unlimited risk, unlike any other product, because the front month, the one that you're short, can spike up with no limit, and the back month or the back expiration is not necessarily going to reflect that. We saw that when the back expiration maybe went higher by three or four points and the front maybe can go uh, up by 30 points. And that, along with the spike in volatility of volatility, so V VIX, the volatility of VIX, is go it's also going to go higher. So those options, not only are they going to be at a higher level, VIX is going to be at a higher level, but VIX is going to have a higher implied volatility as well. So it's a double whammy of losses when you're short, for example, a call. So you should never short calls on the VIX. You should always use, if you if you want to do that, that strategy and you can do it, you can do any option strategy. You can uh, buy a call, sell a call, buy a put, sell a put, buy a put spread, sell a put spread. The only one that you should avoid is the selling a call naked so you can sell a call spread you can sell um you can sell a put but you can't sell a call you shouldn't sell a call and you also shouldn't um have a long calendar position or a long diagonal position so these are the, the three ways that you can trade the vix the uh the one that we use we use all of them I use futures, I use uh, ETFs, and I use options as well. Depends on the uh, the market, the, the the market, and the environment that we're in in terms of the IV level, in terms of where I see the best, the better liquidity, where I can have more flexibility for my positions. Um, if I, if I want to if I want to do something in size related to VIX, the easiest way is to go to the futures. If I want to do something that's somewhat, that maybe I want to sell premium on VIX, then I need to go to the VIX options. 
if I want to have, uh, for example, a uh, cover call on something related to VIX, then, well, I could go and just sell a put on VIX because a cover call is a, it's a short put. But if I wanted to do a cover call because I needed to have a cover call, then I would go with an ETF or an ETN. I would go to VIX, buy the VIX, sell a call on the VIX, and uh, that's how I would uh, build it. So all three types of of uh, products, all all these instruments, these three instruments are are good. They are useful for us when we try to trade VIX. So you should know how to trade all of them because at some point you're going to find that one of these three is the best alternative to trade the VIX efficiently and profitably.